you kind of touched on this I guess idea that in the healing you're going from feeling fundamentally unsafe in the world to feeling safe you know and and I guess in your you're kind of offering a, a kind of safe container when you're as a therapist right and and people need to to move from you know I guess if you're if we take a simple example of acute trauma if it's someone who's been in a war and there's a single event you know like a bomb goes off and they are having flashbacks I think maybe people can understand part of the healing mechanism as being you know if you if it's five years later and you're you're back home there's no risk of a bomb going off but you're still hijacked by this fear and then suddenly you're in a, a safe room you're back with you know, you're with your family and your normal life but then you're in a safe room with therapists you have the mdma in your system and then you can just have a new perspective shift i think where suddenly you you just get it that you're safe you just suddenly realize you update that memory and and you realize that you were in a safe room with people who are looking after you you're no longer in that environment and i mean mdma also you know, reopens plasticity in the brain right so it seems that you can just just basically update the memory to a memory of safety. Yeah, that you can have both, you know, reconsolidation of memory, right? That that then the the memory gets opened up and these other parts are added to it, which is, oh, I'm here safe. I just recalled this trauma. You know, sometimes I don't think it happens all the time, but sometimes we've had people who will recall the trauma and and so it's it's kind of like exposure therapy, but mm -hmm. it's but it's um, but it's naturally occurring, so that they start talking about all the events that led up to it and the events of the trauma and like the incident, and in a way that it, it they that their body doesn't stop them, so that they can continue to do that in a way that feels safe. Sometimes they'll say, wow, like I've never, I'm indulging myself in going through this process of memory, even though it seems like that would be harmful, that it's an indulgence because I haven't, because I can do it without hyperactivation, without numbing. I can actually recall and understand what happened and that the he part of the healing happens from that. Right from that, um, from from being able to tell the story uninterrupted by the body that tries to stop it to protect it. And you mentioned that you're you, you're kind of allowing the the person themselves, their natural healing intelligence, to direct the process. Do you? How would you describe your role in in this process? Mm -hmm. Um. I, I mean, I think part of it is we do want to make room for everybody's style. We all have a different style, a different way of approaching things so that there's room for that. But mostly that I am not the expert, that I actually don't know. And so for me, my, if I'm talking about uh, a personal experience, my biggest challenge in a session is having an agenda, having the part of myself that thinks I know because I've treated trauma for a long time, because I'm a therapist that has worked with this. And so, because I know, right, there's a part of me that thinks and feels that it knows, like it know what's going on for you right now and I want to help you. And so is how do I get that part out of the way and come back to the present moment and say, maybe that's true Maybe there's a truth in that. Maybe what's happening for this person is what I'm thinking is happening, but there's also something happening that I couldn't possibly imagine in a million years. I would not be able to imagine really what's happening because ultimately when they come up with the solutions that they come up with for their lives is something they never imagined. It feels so foreign to me. I go, wow. That is unbelievable. I never thought of that. So it, as a therapist, it's more, how do we allow room for that, for the exploration that they're having of how do I sit with them? They're figuring it out for themselves. And, and so I can help them. I can ask questions. I can be curious, but I can also suspend my agenda of what I think needs to happen or what I it's true so that I can make room for what actually their inner healing intelligence is trying to tell them. Right. And I think you're, yeah, you're absolutely right to emphasize this kind of natural 
healing intelligence that happens. Um, and but I also think I think with MDMA more than any other substance, I really think that the kind of healing container that you offer is is really valuable because so so my first experience was it was self-directed. And unlike other substances, like you know, people go on ayahuasca retreats and people find healing with mushrooms and things, these kind of naturally occurring things, I think tend to things can unfold in a way that can be self-directed with MDMA, maybe because it's synthetic, <clears throat> it seems to be so powerful. You know, in my, in my case, the, the, the recall of, of events was, was too much too soon. And if I'd been in a therapeutic context, I'm sure I would have had a guide who would say, okay, like step back for a bit for a second, but you know, um, so that's perhaps one of my, one of my few missteps um, of kind of exploring this, this space for myself. So I think that's something to emphasize for people. I, I um, well, there are lots of people, um, experimenting with other psychedelic substances for healing by themselves. I think um, MDMA is one to, to particularly emphasize the value of, of having a safe therapeutic container. That's great. And so you were able to do that. You were able to do both, like realize that. that first yeah. Experience. I mean, for me, it was, it was, it ended up being very valuable because I think without, it allowed me to, I, so I went, um, I went from thinking I had depression to realizing it was secondary to trauma and then thinking I could kind of go into the trauma and, and release it, which, which did happen, but it just led to, it was too much too soon. And I felt kind of di dissociated for a while and um, overwhelmed by it. But that, that then gave me a huge amount of material to work with. And so it, it ended up for the best. I, you know, it ended up being incredibly therapeutic, but I don't think, I don't think a therapist would have, would have guided me the way I ended up going. I think they would have taken a more, a, a wiser, slower approach. Um, so, mm. so uh, yeah, it, it can be, it can work out for the best, but it, I think MDMA is something that's very powerful. Yeah. Yeah. I had a, actually a similar experience of the first time doing about, yeah, really. so I understand what you're saying. And I think you bring up a really important point, which is too fast, too soon. Um, that part of this work is both, yes, if that's going to happen, having a container where there's going to be therapists there that are going to be able to hold what you're, what you're experiencing, right? That as a therapist, the training is really, can you hold what's going to happen in the room? What's going to come in the room, which could be really difficult and challenging. Can you hold that? And I think we can hold it if we step out of the way and we, and we engage, we sort of um, dive into their world and really support them in that. And so I'm not, so, I'm not important there, right? Like whatever I say, whatever I do, it's, it's, it's not so important as it is for me to hold that container. So that's really important in order as a guidance, right? Of um, helping somebody with, uh, titrate or or even point out like what's happening to you right now is this too much okay it's too much let's stay with that that it's too much what is that right like that those are the kinds of things that maybe a person doing it on their own might not be able to do but the other piece that is important around it is that because it does because shifts happen too fast or very fast it's a great thing and that's one of the good things about MDMA that we say, oh, people always say, this is amazing. It's just like a lot of, a lot happened, right? And at the same time, when a lot happens fast, then you have to catch up and there's a period of catching up. And so the integration of the experience is just as important because it is the catching up to yourself of like this big change. What do I do with that now? And if we're left alone and we don't have the therapy and we don't have the integration, that that can, you know, that can be left also untouched. And then there is no integration because it was just too fast too soon, like you said. And so the integration part of this work is just as important. It's very, very crucial for the for what can continue the growth that can continue to happen in in, in life. Yeah, I definitely feel like it, it unlocked material that then was healed through the integration process. As you say, that was, that was where the real yes. kind of healing work happened. Um, yeah. And so, yeah. yeah, it's, it's, it's strange to have this kind of, I, to simultaneously feel like it was a slight misstep, but also was had incredibly beneficial results because without that huge 
unearthing of material, I, I, perhaps I would still be struggling with those problems that now have disappeared.